everybody. Dr. Zero Show right now is going to connect to Cambridge University to associate researcher Didem Gürdürbro. Welcome, Didem. How are you? Hello. Thank you, Seda. I'm fine. How are you? Fine, fine. Pleasure to have you again. And uh, and I really want to talk about robots still when I find an expert. Okay. <laughs> you know, be, because when I was child, there was this Voltron. Was it Voltron the name? Mm -hmm. I really liked to watch them. And then we had these Autobots. It was again fantastic. And I still watch Transformers. So, which, so yeah. when I see somebody who knows so I, I feel excited, even though I don't do anything about robots right now. <laughs> so do you have this type I'm of happy. toys? Um, I had lots of toys. When, when I was growing up, some people give me gifts like dolls, which I had no interest to play with them. To me, it was just like not interesting because they don't move, they don't talk, you cannot drive them. So I always uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. took my brother's uh, cars and balls and uh, anything with electronics. Uh, I was known to find a place and use my dad's uh, screwdrivers to open the, uh, the car to check inside and so on. I was quite a weird child, now that you are saying. <laughs> you are not weird. Maybe we were weird that we have this prejudgment to give some specific toys to w some kids and some different type exactly. of specific toys to others without actually trying to understand what they are interested in. Exactly. Yes. I'm hoping it is not ex uh, happening anymore in 2021. We should be already uh, yeah. away from this kind of I agree. Thinking. Also, also I, I think for we should we can try to raise interest of the technology not only to one gender but every kid that are that are interested so so and provide them opportunity because the way you raise also influence their future in the in in life also their future in the job market in the academia so exactly. when we come back to uh, robots so you you try to convince me that we should not be scared <laughs> from robots I, I, am did. Still, yes. I am still hesitant to be convinced, but maybe you can share with us what can we do so that we can have a nice life with robots, that we can, they can be part of our lives, but at the same time, I don't lose control of robots so that the robots at home cannot be hacked by somebody else that can kill me. Like it doesn't have to be real life robot, but, but there are robots everywhere that collects the data this and that that connects the door let's say we don't say them robots but we have these alarm systems what if alarm system is locked and i cannot go out it closes everything so what can we do to avoid this type of issues exactly i think i mean each one of us have different roles right um as a researcher i work on these applications what i try to do is to make the design and the development and also later operations of this uh, type of systems, uh, robots uh, or another type of cyber physical systems, to be more inclusive, mm -hmm. to have a purpose that will pr somehow uh, contribute to the public good and it will not be biased, it will be equal for everyone and it will be possible to be used or to benefit life of everyone. Um, as citizens, what can we do? We, we need to be more interested and engaged with these systems development. We need to ask uh, companies, generally technology companies, but also uh, other type of companies are entering the robotics sector now um, to be diverse so everyone can be able to work in these companies mm -hmm. they bring also what they know about the world they bring their different perspectives then we can talk about less biases in these um, applications mm -hmm. for instance robots sometimes use um, face recognition mm -hmm. but we know from other applications where 
artificial intelligence is used for face recognition that they, there are lots of biases uh, mm -hmm. which makes really bad decision when it comes to different skin colors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So as citizens, we can ask these companies to employ more diverse uh, employees. Uh, then we need to ask uh, these applications to be inclusive, to be equal, to be approachable by any of us. We need to understand how they build these technologies. It is becoming so complex that no one is able to explain how we build a robot. Uh, mm -hmm. But without the citizens understanding what they are, how they function, and why we have them, uh, it is surely difficult to accept them in, their, in our daily lives. But I, as a citizen, how can I understand it? Because it, you need to have a like, variety array of knowledge from electronics to mechanics to engineering, electricity engineering. How, yes. can, how can I have like the computer science? So I am, let's say I am an ordinary guy that is working in different domain in a restaurant how, how what can i because it is beyond my knowledge but at the same time it influences my life how i can utilize it how can i defend myself or how i can influence that development in robot can be in the positive direction but not in negative direction yeah i see your point i think one thing that we need to keep in mind sir that is that these applications these robots will not be part of our lives quite soon yet. Mm -hmm. um, the, the robot that I have in uh, my house is a robot vacuum cleaner. Mm -hmm. uh, and my cat sometimes sits on it and they do the cleaning together. So Really? It is <laughs> <laughs> not escaping. OK, so travel with the robot. I, I, I am happy that it helps me with cleaning. It, that is one thing, but I don't expect anything else from that robot. Uh, okay, it is smart in a sense that it cleans uh, my house nicely, that's but the uh, that's, that's, the only thing. that's the purpose of it. That's the limitation of it. And that's what, what I expect from it to do. So our relation is limited on that. And when we think about uh, what the future will look like and how we will engage with robots, we can have lots of different scenarios in our mind. Uh, but currently, the robots are working in manufacturing automotive sector. They do repetitive tasks very mm -hmm. fast and very efficiently. They can carry and um, rotate huge, uh, quite heavy uh, frames and so on. They are in, uh, as I mean, last time talked, uh, in warehouse settings, carrying stuff around, counting, weighing, uh, and so on. So um, as a common citizen, probably we will not be working with them every day. And the people who will work with them will work, as I said, uh, like my vacuum robot cleaner uh, is we will only have limited relationship for a specific action. And I am hoping that this will evolve in time. So when we have more robots in our daily lives, we will also learn more about how they function and uh, what is their limits and what is our relationship with them. Otherwise, we don't need to know how they really function in a sense that what is the code running? What is the electronic or mechanical units there? We don't know that for cars either, even though yeah, some men think right. that we know, we yeah. don't know it anymore. But, but for cars, for example, you, you gave perfect example just to show how strange question that I had. But when you related to example, it directly makes sense. But then for the car industry, we demand to have, you know, these rules and regulations for the traffic you know, the speed limit and then some checks. You need to be qualified to to drive the car and then to mechanics. And then there are different institutions and standards that the cars are tested. Do you think these type of tests are in place for the robots right now? Like they take robots. Is there any institution that checks whether the code of this robot will harm anybody or not? Um, it depends in what domain they are, but uh, industrial robots have this, and they also need to follow the uh, safety standards. 
similarly, uh, the robots that we can have in our house, like the um, vacuum cleaner, um, is called an electronic appliance, and there is also standardization. So I know that it will uh, not uh, give electricity to my cat, and it will not kill my cat, and so on. So there are standards, but they are also evolving because um, you know how these things work. Unless you need it, do you don't have it. So now we are starting to need these standardizations and mechanisms. So on one hand, we are building them also. Yes. Also, so which means you actually you, you inspired me in one way, like you don't have to know it, but you can be the other side as a user to complain and claim and demand. These are the things should be in place. So I can say, okay, for example, basically, I don't need to have a robot to tell them that, oh, if you have a vacuum cleaner, robot shouldn't kill my small animal at home. So it is exactly. very legit demand that I can ask because it's part of my life and I don't need to know about robots. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much oh, for I'm joining. Going... Please, do break a sir. So, are you going to have a robot soon, Serdar? Can I manage to convince you? <laughs> for vacuum cleaner, you convince me. <laughs> for vacuum cleaner, I should check. The prices are not that high right now, and I think vacuum cleaner will really relax me. I ne I really need to be sure that. But who cares? Because the, the data of my surface is already available everywhere. Like mm -hmm. I, because they, they will be AI. But these vacuum cleaners, since you are already here, do they learn by hitting the walls, the, the, the dimension of my home so they can clean better every time? Exactly. Now, yes, exactly. Now the, the new versions of these, uh, these robots are able to learn from their mistakes. So every really? time they become better and better. Yeah, exactly. But then I hope it is wonderful. Great. I hope I hope they didn't teach them to climb over the bed. Imagine I am sleeping <laughs> and the robots run there. What are you doing? Cleaning, it is dirty. Your clothes are dirty. <laughs> Not yet. Not you yet. are saying so that. Thank you very much for joining from Cambridge and I wish you have a nice day. It is Thank great to talk much. to you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>